fueled by C4, Cellucor, and Extend. Use the code Clydesdale to get 20% off the checkout at C4Energy.com. On Clydesdale Media, where we bring you the widest array of content here on our YouTube channel. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notifier so you first know when new episodes are available. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Clydesdale Media Podcast. My name is Scott Schweitzer. I am the Clydesdale. We are so honored to have with us the former Miss Bethany Shadburn and the current <laughs> Mrs. Bethany Flores. How you doing, yes. Bethany? Thank you. I'm good. Um, yeah, I'm actually in the process of changing my name, so I think I'll still be Shadburn for semifinals. Uh, and then, you know, if I make it back to the games and they let me, then I'll be Flores there, which I think will probably confuse people. But I don't know. I don't know how that works. I um, I'm interested to see if they'll let me change it in the middle of the season. But yeah. 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 I know it confused me the last time this happened. Because I, when I first yeah. met you at the 17 games, you had a different name and we don't yeah. need to go into all that. And then yeah. when you switched to Shadburn, I mean, I it mind. took me, <laughs> it took me a minute to get all that figured out. And then, yep. and then now I'm used to Shadburn, but the florist seems to like be pretty quick turnaround for me. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully it rolls off the tongue a little bit easier too. So yeah, a lot of people wanted me to like hyphenate my name and do Shadburn Flores. Um, but for me, it's like, I don't know, it's a respect thing for me. Like, I just want to do it in honor of Randy. And it's not like he's asking me to do it. He was like, you can do whatever you want. You can keep Shadburn if you want. Um, but I was like, no, like I want, I want to be proud of being a Flores and like your career it goes away eventually, but you know, your family and your husband stays there forever. So, um, yeah, I just, it's an honoring thing for me. So I'm sure there'll be people that are like, why would you do that? Um, I'm sure there'll be people that are like, yes, pro switching your name, but it was just a decision that I wanted to make. Yeah. It's funny. I talked to another athlete recently who got married and they mm -hmm. are keeping their name for CrossFit. But legally, it's been changed for everything else. Mm. I didn't know you could do that. You can change it or you yeah. can keep it. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. I guess you just don't send the email to CrossFit and tell them. And, yeah. But that's know. interesting with like the payment stuff. So like because like for taxes mm. and all of that, that's the only thing that I would be interested on is like, but what do you do for like taxes? <laughs> And you get like yeah, we definitely check. didn't get into all the legalities <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so that's why I was just like, oh, screw it. I'm going all the way. <laughs> um, so Chelsea Miller says, just pull a share and just go by Bethany. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, I don't know. They couldn't even get my name right at the CrossFit Games as Brittany. So, you know, I have to just go with my sister's name and just go with Brittany. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> And wait, actually, when you signed your autograph, you only signed Bethany. I don't know if people know that's that. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I have done both. I've done Bethany Shadburn, but it's like S, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, for like my bear complex with the band on it, I did just put Bethany. So I mean, yeah, I'll probably just continue to do that. Yeah. And on the uh, Bulldogs and Crocs shirt right there, just Bethany. Oh, I just put Bethany? Oh, see? Yeah. Perfect. See, I, I was ready for it. <laughs> just in case. And, uh. Corey Leonard says, good old Brittany Shaburn. <laughs> yep. That was the 2019 first event. So I was running in from, I think the workout was like a 400 meter run and then it was a rope climbs and snatches. And then you hear, here comes Brittany. <laughs> and I was like, is there somebody else that has Brittany here? I didn't know. <laughs> and then like all the fans were like, it's Bethany. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. So, so let's, oh gosh, now I, you said that. Now I, I have two roads to go down. Dang it, uh -oh. Bethany. Okay. So fans, you have one of the largest contingents of fans in the sport. Um, yeah. Interesting. When you, when you were going through your last two years, which has been riddled with different things, and we'll get into that more specifically, how hard is it? Do you feel a pressure 
with the fans or are you just so like laser focused on you getting healthy that that has to be secondary? Um, yes and no. I think that as an athlete, you can't help but think about that stuff sometimes. But if I constantly think about that only and like, you know, me feeling like I'm disappointing people, whether that's fans or just family and friends or anybody else, then I'm not going to become the best version of myself. And so I think as a human, I would be lying if I said that it doesn't like uh, that I don't think about it. Um, but I try not to allow myself to stay there in those moments and I allow myself to get back to what I'm doing and what I can do, um, to be able to be the best version of myself. So the last time we interviewed you, I, I believe we interviewed you right before, like it was like a month before the games and then we released it the week yeah. of the games. Um, and it, and it's been a minute since we've talked to you. So You've gotten married since then. We've talked about the name change, but we haven't yeah. talked about the wedding. So yeah. yeah, was it everything you dreamed it to be? <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Um, well, to kind of go reverse back. So I was previously married when I was 20. And that was just like a podunk wedding put together in two weeks in my mom's backyard. Um, and so I didn't really get the full experience of having an actual wedding. Um, and so I kind of wanted to do that. I mean, there was a part of me that was like, ah, I don't want to spend the money because this is so expensive to have a wedding. I was like, I feel like I'm just flushing it down the toilet a little bit, the money. And I was just like, oh gosh, this is a black hole. Um, so those are part of me that was just like, I just want to just go get married and do this really quick. But um, it was cause for a celebration and I'm glad that we did it. Um, the night went way too quickly, um, but it was a very intimate wedding. It was only, I think less than 50 of us there. And, um, we made it like a weekend thing. So we had everybody stay like on site the night before and the night after. And yeah, it was a lot of fun and got to wear a actual wedding dress, which was nice. We don't see that very often, nor do I ever wear dresses. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a really good time and I'm glad we did it. Yeah, it's funny. It took me probably 10 years to pay off my wedding. Yeah, that's terrible. Right. <laughs> I'm like, why and did so you I, make it so expensive? <laughs> I, I am trying to convince my daughter, who just graduated from college this weekend. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you, and she has a boyfriend, a long standing boyfriend. I'm like, when you get married, I beg of you, let's have it a destination wedding and at least make it something to remember and not yeah. throw a ton of money at just a random party that yeah. will, it'll go by in the blink of an eye. Yeah, it does. It really does. Yeah. I wish it would slow so, down. Yeah. And, and Jonathan Ortega is in the chat. He's asking how much my wedding costs. First of all, it was <gasps> many moons ago and the dollar went way further than it does today. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing is, um, <laughs> We, my wife and I wanted an intimate wedding of less than a hundred people and it ended up being 350 people when our parents got involved. Oh gosh. We wanted light hors d'oeuvres. It ended up being a full meal. Um, it just like, we lost total control of our wedding and then it, yeah. So bad. <laughs> I'm it mourning was, for was, you. <laughs> but Hey, 26 years later, we're still together. So something worked. That's a unicorn um, so, right there, unfortunately. <laughs> so there it is with that. But um, so I saw the pictures. You looked amazing in your dress. You. Randy looked awesome in his suit and tux. Um, mm -hmm. And it looked like a very, very cool setting. Did, did yeah. So was it kind of destination for you guys? It kind of was. It was um, so it was back in Texas where we're originally both from. Um, and it was like probably 30, 45 minutes away from where we were once living. So it's kind of out in the boondocks and it's the country, countryside. And yeah, it was, it was nice. It was just, it was away from everything. It wasn't in the city. So, which is kind of like what we like a little bit more and the slower pace. So it was nice. Yeah. It looked very, very nice. And we're thank so you. happy for you. Oh, um, thank you. 
so is Randy still doing the same job he was doing when we last talked? Randy is still with the Lakers. They are in the playoffs, baby. Let's go. That's what I was going to say. It's a pretty busy, busy, busy time for him right now. I'm assuming. Yes. Very busy. Yeah. They're currently right now in San Francisco. Uh, they have a game tonight. Hopefully we win. Cause then we'll win the, I think we'll win the series if that's the case. So that is correct. They're up three to one. Yes. They just need one more win. And mm-hmm. the, uh, one of the next three. Yeah. But yeah. But let's do it tonight. Please. Seal the deal and move on. Please. Yeah. Let's just, yeah. Let's mark this off and be done with it. Cause yeah, that's rough. So you're, rough you're prepping for semis. He's mm-hmm. in the playoffs. Do you guys get to see each other much during this time? Yeah, it's actually better for when they're in the playoffs because they're here a little bit more um, and they're not traveling all over the place. It's just one place back and forth that they're going to. So like when they were playing with Memphis, it was just like back and forth there, but they were there for like four days and then here for four days. So it was it was actually better. I like it. It's actually slower pace for him than during season. So and then same for San Francisco. It's like I get to see him a lot more during the week. So I like it. I think he likes it too. So, so Chelsea Miller, uh, I'm sorry. There's so much going on. Chelsea wants to know, where did you guys meet? Um, so it's funny. We, um, we're actually from the same hometown. We lived, we grew up about 30 minutes away from each other, but never met. That's in Austin, Texas. Um, and then we actually met at a strength and conditioning conference in South Carolina, um, and then realized from there that we were from the same hometown. So it was kind of, kind of weird. And I was like, oh, we never met. <laughs> but I mean, like when you're in high school, middle school, like th- we're three years apart, so you would never really kind of meet each other anyways. But, um, yeah, so South Carolina at a strength and conditioning conference. Wow. So you've moved from Texas to Vegas to LA. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And does life look like it's going to be in LA as long as Randy's with the Lakers? And then depending on what would happen with jobs in the future, his is the more mobile. You can train anywhere. He yeah, has exactly. to be with a team. Um, so would you have to follow him wherever that would be? Yeah, that was kind of like the goal. So when I moved out to Vegas, that was kind of um, my quote unquote selfish time. I, I was like, I want to, I had never lived alone really and never moved out of Texas. So that was my first time moving out of Texas when I was 27, uh, which is crazy to say. A lot of people have probably moved out way before that. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted that time to myself. And then I told him like, you know, after you know, when we get married, whenever that is, then like, I'm all yours, like wherever you are, I'm at, but I wanted this time. So, and that was always the game plan going to Vegas, uh, which was, you know, I told Justin, I was like, "Eh, I'm out here until I get married kind of thing. So whenever that is, then I'm gone. (laughs) I want to be with my husband. Uh, Randy sacrificed a lot. Like he, he had a crazy schedule. When I was out in Vegas, he was still with the Lakers traveling all of their games. And then on his off days, he would come and see me for like 12 hours and then go back to LA. So, uh, he sacrificed a lot during that time when we were dating. And so, um, it was my turn to do some sacrificing. And honestly, being out in LA has not been a sacrifice whatsoever. It's been fantastic. I've enjoyed every second of it. And honestly, I didn't think I was going to like it out here. So that's saying something. So you've mentioned that this is your second marriage. You were married very young Mm -hmm. to have someone that is willing to make those sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Like how soon did it take you to realize this is, this is my guy. Um, I think right away, I kind of knew that this guy was different than a lot of other guys that I had dated in the past or have been with. Um, He just had like this, secureness about him right away um and even him like right when we were dating he was in the middle of season in college and he was like all right i'm i'm gonna come out and see you you know and i was like oh 
okay. <laughs> and so right away, he like started making a lot of sacrifices for me by traveling across the country because he was in California at the time. Um, but, you know, as I moved to Vegas, it was really shown like all the sacrifices that he was continuing to make. And um, I think that was the biggest thing in this relationship compared to my others is that he has always been very consistent with who he is um, personality wise and what he does. So he's never going to like over promise anything and anything that he does say that he's going to do, uh, he does it. But most of the time it's not through speaking. He does a lot of things through action. He doesn't even have to say anything. So um, I just really appreciate that about him. Definitely makes me feel very secure. Is that attractive to you that have someone that knows who he is and does not try oh, yeah. to be anybody else? Yes. hundred percent. That is the biggest thing that I, I love about him is, um, and that's what I said, like, cause we wrote on our own vows for the wedding. And, um, that was like a big thing for me is like integrity and character and just the, his personality and it's, and it's way, because like, you know, we are going to get older and we are going to transform as humans and maybe not look the same. <laughs> Hopefully we get to keep our hair and stuff, but you never know. And um, the biggest thing is like your personality and your character and integrity, right? That's what you're left with at the end of the day. So um, if you don't like that about the person, then it's going to be really tough to stay with them, you know? So that was like the most important thing uh, going into another relationship. On top of he is very attractive and very good looking. So <laughs> it's a win-win for me. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Um, so when we, when we were talking before we went on air, you were saying that our podcast may have been the last one you did before, yeah. like in for about, it was actually nine months since you've done a podcast. So yeah. I want to kind of catch up with everything that's happened and kind of walk through that year. Um, and as I told you before we went on the air, like I wanted to give you space, like you've been a good friend of the show for a very long time, but. Sometimes you just need space to yourself and you, you quickly agreed and said you needed a little bit of time out of the spotlight. So yeah. can you walk us through just that thought process to start? Oh man. Um, yeah, I think the biggest thing is like you, you learn more about yourself. I think when you're stuck with yourself and you don't have any other distractions and it's a little bit quieter and, um, there's a lot more alone time and, yeah, I think that, you know, of course I wanted, I love getting on podcasts and I love talking and I can just talk people's ears off. But um, I think that I was, that was just a part of the process that I needed to do. And a part of the journey is to sit and be quiet and observe, observe myself, observe my surroundings and just kind of get more to the bottom of myself and my tendencies. And I think when you do that, epiphanies start to arise a little bit. Um, epiphanies about yourself, epiphanies about maybe even your future. Um, and maybe the things that you are causing, I'm going to try, try, try to say this nicely to myself, but like the things that maybe you're causing to stay in, in a bad rut, you know, like in these bad cycles of either patterns of thinking or um, just doing things. And so, yeah, it was very enlightening and uh, very hard. And I'm not going to say that I'm on the other side of it, but I've definitely learned a lot about myself and started to apply things that I've never done before these past couple of years, and especially these past nine, nine months. Yeah. So, the last um, couple times you've been on, we've talked about your faith to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, how much, how important was that during this journey? Oh gosh, everything. <laughs> There's no way I'd be doing what I'm doing right now um, without faith, without God, um, without God leading me to certain people, without having an inner circle, without having community. Um, no way. I would not be where I'm at right now. There's no way I'd be thinking the way that I'm thinking, um, having the peace that I'm having, even having like, even though last year was very upsetting for me, um, the last two years, not going to the CrossFit games, I had a lot of peace with it all, like an underlying peace. 
Um, cause I think God can hold two opposing emotions and thoughts at the same time. And that's something that was kind of revealed to me through these last two years of being frustrated and being very disappointed, but at the same time, having peace and being o- not okay with the situation, but just knowing that it's going to end up okay. Like I'm still good, even though there's not great things happening right now in my life. Um, and I think that was an important realization to have, um, these last couple of years. How much of is it, is it, is discovering your priorities and what are good and important things, right? Yeah. Maybe you just identified as an athlete for a while and you need Uh to realize you're more than an athlete. Yep. Yep. Yes. That was the most important thing. And, uh, I think, um, hello, Bella. Sorry, I got to get Bella up real quick. It's very important. Important part. Come here. Come here. Oh, we love Bella. <laughs> the emotional support. Uh, here we go. Say hi to the world. All right. To your bed. Hey, Bella. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, sorry. Can you ask the question one more time? Bella distracted me. <laughs> all, all I was saying is during that time, did a shift in priorities occur? Because yeah part of like you said, like, even though great things weren't happening, but that's probably just your athletic side. You got married to an amazing man. You moved to LA when you found out you loved it. Like, Mm -hmm. did you realize that you're more than just an athlete? Yeah. And I think that started happening back in 2019 after the CrossFit games. Um, cause that was kind of like the beginning of my journey of just growth and kind of looking inward and stuff. And, and realizing that I just like wasn't happy even with the placement that I got of eighth place and didn't feel like I deserved it and, and all this stuff. And even the money that I did get, I was like, this is not very satisfying. And so that's what kind of sent me on the journey at the beginning. Um, but as these years kind of went on and on, um, I think that's been the secret sauce that I've been kind of missing. And I feel like a lot of people um, are kind of struggling with right now. Um, a lot of people that have been in sport for a while um, just aren't happy. Like they're burnt out, they're unhappy. Um, some are taking a break, some are continuing to push through that unhappiness. And um, and, and it's not to say that like life's going to be super happy all the time and every single day is rainbows and sunshine. But um, I was at a point where I was completely burnt out and I wanted to quit last year. Like I was just like, wasn't having fun. And the first time that like that emotion came out was during Wadapalooza in 2022. Um, I just remember being on the floor and just like not wanting to be there. I was just really unhappy. And usually like I'm a, I'm a comp- competition girl. Like I love being on the floor. I love competing. That's like my happy place. And I feel very joyful there. And, um, for that not to happen was a really scary thing for me. And I was just like, why do I feel this way? Why am I feeling like this? And, um, I was like crying before each day. And I just was trying to figure out why I was unsatisfied and not having fun. Um, And so even though I didn't want to have last year happen, uh, I think I really needed it because it allowed priorities to get back in check. I just um, realized that I wasn't allowing people to come with me on my journey uh, because of probably many reasons, but a big one is probably not wanting to let people down because I'm a huge people pleaser. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. Um, so I was like, I'll just keep them at bay and not them, not let them enjoy or come with me on my journey because I don't want to let anybody down. I just need to do my own failures by myself. Um, and I just realized I was sabotaging myself in so many different ways and wasn't deserving of anything good. So I was going to sabotage myself um, through just like a lot of different things like over exercising and under eating because of body image issues and realizing that was a priority too. I was like, I was putting too much of an emphasis on the way I looked um, and not the way I was performing. And yeah, so I think a lot of, I like my, my eyes were opened up to a lot of things and where my priorities were at this past year and um, having a break, I call it my sabbatical. <laughs> was very necessary um, for just 
just allowing some of my core values to change, which for me personally, a core value is allowing everything to move together, um, which is like having friends and family, having relationships and building them and having them move through the journey with me, um, being successful in my career, uh, in my marriage, financially, just having all the mo areas move together instead of one moving and the other one just staying behind. And I think that's kind of where I was at before this journey. So Trish says, I think we all fall prey to that from time to time. And I will say, I relate to that immensely. Yeah. I am the huge, I have always been a huge people pleaser. Mm -hmm. And even in my journey with this podcast and this media company, it is like, I had to determine what, what is best for me mm -hmm. and not necessarily what's best for everybody else. Right. Yeah. Um, I had, I can only be the best me I can be. And it's been a journey getting through that. Yeah. And sometimes at like the highest peaks, I'm the most depressed. Yeah. Yeah. It's not fulfilling. You did it the right. wrong way. You got there the wrong way and it's unfulfilling, you know, it's empty. So, um, now I lost my train of thought again. Um, but, <laughs> good. uh, but yeah, yeah, I fell into the trap of, uh, relating to you so much. Now, uh, my next question went away. Um, so anyway, <laughs> you take the year off, you take the year off yeah. and I'm going to go in this direction then. And you meet, you, you probably don't meet. But you start hanging out with Haley Mario. Oh, yeah. Yep. I love her. She's great. And there's been some documentaries kind of put up, little short documentaries on YouTube about the two of you um, hanging out together and training together. Yeah. Um, and that's probably a very different climate than what you've been in in the past. So why was that so important? And how did that relationship develop? Yeah, I think it's just, um, I think for me, it was, so when I was in Vegas, I loved like the first year there because I got to spend all my time with Carrie and rubbing off of some of her greatness onto me was amazing. And spending one-on-one -on -one time with a, a girl that has the same priorities, wants to do the same thing, um, was amazing. It was such a great experience. Um, and then like the second year came around and obviously Carrie had to retire. It was sad. Um, but she, she definitely fair warned me the entire year before. She's like, this is my last year. Just letting you know. I'm like, no, don't do it. Um, but it just, it got very overwhelming for me. I'm not, I just realized that like for me having like 15 or 20 people there is just too, too overwhelming for me. Um, and it made me kind of like do the opposite, like kind of shut down compared to just blossom. And so when I moved out here to LA, I was like, I feel like I need a person, you know, cause like you can't do this journey by yourself. Like training is really hard. And even though I've been training alone, which is, it's actually been really good because of just the way that I've had to train this year. Um, I still wanted to continue to connect with other fellow athletes because there are a lot of special women out there that are very strong, very brilliant, very courageous. And, um, she's definitely one of them. Um, and it was weird because I never had, I kind of talked to her a little bit at West coast in 2021, but not a whole lot. And I think Cooper, my manager was like, Hey, Haley lives out there. So you should try to connect with her. Um, we live like an hour, hour and a half away from each other. So it's not like we get to see each other all the time. But, um, there was like this something in my heart, like a intuition thing that I was like, I need to reach out to her. And so, yeah, we connected right when I moved here last June and um, kind of blossomed a, fr a friendship from there and just realized that we were on totally separate journeys, different journeys, but very similar at the same time. Um, the way that she was, is funny, the way that she was training during her pregnancy was very similar to the way I was training with my back injury. So, um, just having to modify the same way. Um, and so, yeah. And then once the open came around, we were kind of both in the same position of like, I don't know what's going to happen. It's all going to be dependent on the workouts. And we want to, we wanted to both put ourselves in a really uncomfortable position of possibly failing 
um, compared to just not trying at all. Like we weren't, we weren't willing to not try. And so I think us doing that together was really cool and a lot of fun. And she's super sweet, both her and her husband. Oh, I lost you. Oh, no, you didn't. You. No, you oh, didn't. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's, it's something I do every show. I got to do it at least once and that's leave myself oh. on mute. Uh, oh. There are three people in that I love in this sport that I have been following forever. And it's you, Carrie and Haley. Like, oh, I don't know what it is. That's cool. Like that trifecta is um, some of the best people I've ever met. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I want to, one, we have a question <laughs> from Corey saying, did Carrie also wear a lot of Crocs? <laughs> Actually, I think I ended up getting her a pair finally for her birthday or something and no i think her dad actually got her a pair and she's like oh these are great i like them <laughs> but she did not wear them as much as i did <laughs> yeah she's she's the best and she's awesome what was really cool is getting to see the two of you at west coast that wow. year that is that's going to be one of my greatest memories of all time <laughs> yeah um the two of you at west coast and the domination that you put on as a team was mm -hmm. unreal. Thank you. I remember the question I was going to ask now, and it goes to the next thing. So we see you at West coast, then the unfortunate COVID incident of the games. Yeah. And then you go to Wadapalooza and you said yeah. that you, you didn't even feel like competing yet. You almost won that event. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah. and I want to dive into something there because we talked about it briefly last time you were on, but mm -hmm. it was one no rep and I was mm -hmm. livid in the stands, livid. I talked yeah. to Cooper after it. Cooper was livid <laughs> and you were like, I'm at peace with it. Yeah. And like that just confounded me. Um, <laughs> and then, but now that you're kind of explaining where your head was at the time, it's making a little more sense. Yeah. 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 Um, it wasn't meant for me because I wasn't in the right headspace for it. You know, um, it was for, it was for Emma. It was for Emma. I, I deeply believe that, that it was for Emma. So yeah, this one sucked though. I mean, no one wants to get no reps and then, you know, go from, not that it's about money whatsoever, but it's just like, Oh, going from a hundred thousand to 36,000. You're like, dang, that could have been my wedding right there. Um, but, uh, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. And I was just, I wanted the weekend to be done. Honestly, like I was just like, I'm not having fun. This isn't fun. I'm not happy. So yeah, I wish it wasn't like that, but that's just kind of where I was at. Do you ever sit back and think I wasn't even at a hundred percent mentally like <laughs> you've all, you've had the back thing for a while, like since yeah. you were a teenager. In yeah. gym, like you've told us in gymnastics, that's something mm -hmm. you've had to deal with physically, but yeah. to mentally not be all in and to almost win the event. Do you ever sit back and think like, how the hell did I do that? Um, I think as I'm going through this journey now and just the mindset I'm in, it's allowing me to reflect on what I've done with, um, so little, so little in the sense of like mindset and really not respecting my body. And I neglected it a lot. And um, it's not that I didn't work hard. I think I worked, I don't want to say I worked too hard because uh, I don't know, uh, that's a weird word to say, but um, I worked too hard in the wrong areas, I think. Um, and I just like reflect back of like, what I've done with not even allowing God to be a part of it. Cause I did, I really wasn't allowing God to be a part of it and like really guide me. And, um, I did a, a, amazing things. Like even for when I got eighth place, like I was out for six weeks before the CrossFit games. Like I did not touch a barbell for six weeks and I got to Wisconsin, touched a barbell for the first time, touched 65 pounds. And I just kind of looked at myself and I was like, 
uh, we'll just see what happens tomorrow. And I don't know how I did what I did. And so um, I think when you're not growing as a human and you're just kind of living and surviving, which I think, which is where I was at, um, you can't reflect on all the amazing things that your body does. And I think for me, attributing it to God and allowing what God allows to happen in your life. So yeah, I've been able to do a lot of reflection this past year. And um, even the things that I'm doing right now, I, I have to look back every couple of days and be like, what I'm doing right now in the gym, I couldn't do a month ago, you know, and um, just continuing to look at that stuff and Having that type of mindset is a missing link to my athletic career. It's it's funny you say that because growing up, my dad was a laborer in a, you know, in a, not a steel mill, but a machine shop working 16 hour days. You know, you just work harder and it's so hard living with that inspiration, like my father to then say, I need to turn this over to God. And it's not, yeah. it's not all just the work that I put in, but I need him to go alongside with me. And yeah. I struggle with that. I'm 53 years old and I struggle with that today. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, even though I've been a believer my whole life, um, mm -hmm. it's just, it's a never ending journey. I think for people who are, I'm a control freak and <sighs> it's very hard for me to give up control. And then yeah. especially to, to God. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of really what this, this whole season, that's what it's about for me because there are a lot of things out of my control. I mean, there always is every year with, um, just with life in general, but I think specifically in CrossFit, there's a lot of things out of your control, but, um, uh, specifically this year for me, there's a lot of physical things out of my control. Um, and I'm just allowing God to, really just drive my pathway for the first time. And um, it's giving me a lot of peace and a lot more fulfillment and joy than I ever expected to have, um, especially with physically not being where I wanna be. Um, and so it's been, it's been really cool. Like with the open and quarterfinals this year, like I can't tell you how joyful and how fulfilled I was even with my back you know, not being a hundred percent and maybe not the placements obviously that I want. Um, but through the whole process, I had so much peace and so much joy and, um, yeah, that's what this whole year is about for me. And I think me learning this and just continuing to hand over control. Um, once again, I think is like the missing piece, not only for my life, but, um, also for my CrossFit career. So Trish has a great question. So I'm going to try to remember mine, but I don't yeah. want this one to pass by. Was there a singular moment where she knew it's time to take a step back where, where she realized it wasn't fulfilling like it once was. Mm. And I would add on um, to that. Did, yeah. did you decide that or was it forced upon you? <laughs> yeah. I was about to say it was more forced. Um, I think that back in 2019, it was, uh, it was a choice, but it wasn't like a full on choice to change everything. It was just like the beginning of kind of cracking open the door, as you say. Um, but for me, it was kind of forced upon me, um, with, I think, you know, getting COVID and then still really not listening to what I was supposed to be doing. Um, and then with 2022 happening the way that it did and my, cause I, I literally just told my coach this on the phone. So I was talking to her earlier and I've never feared my back going out on me during any type of competition setting ever. Cause it's never happened. I've always had back issues and my back going out on me prior. And then when it's game time, my back magically holds up. <laughs> Don't know how. Um, but quarterfinals, even though it was like an in-house setting, it was still a competition setting. And that was the first time ever where my back went out on me during a competition setting and, uh, changed the whole, uh, course of the year for me. Um, cause obviously, I mean, those that know CrossFit, but people that don't know CrossFit, if you don't do each part of the season, the open quarterfinals, semifinals, you're not going to the games. So 
if you miss a part or you don't fully complete it, you're done. You're out for the season. So, um, yeah, that was my story last year. And, and I, I think I resisted it for a long time. Like once it happened, I was still at peace. Like I still had those two opposing feelings of like having a lot of peace, but also being very frustrated about it and not really realizing what the whole year was about, I think for myself and it being a sabbatical year. Um, but once I like stopped being a victim, I think I got to, um, yeah, I just got a lot of epiphanies once I kind of released that over to God. So to answer the question, it was, it was kind of forced, <laughs> but it's still a choice. It's still a choice. It's still a choice. Right. So I, I want to thank you for, for kind of explaining that with God, you can, you can be frustrated and be at peace at the same time, because I think that's something I struggle with to this day, yeah. understanding that it can be in two different directions and it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be frustrated and it's okay to be at peace. Yeah. I mean, even yeah. if you read the Bible, Jesus yelled at God <laughs> because he was frustrated but I'm yeah. sure Jesus was at peace at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's, because it's really hard. God. It kind of goes over. Our, yeah. It goes over, it goes over our head. The things that he can deal with uh, from us and, and do. So it's hard. It, we, we can't understand it, but we just have, that's where like faith comes in that he can handle that, you know, but so, so here's my hard. next question. <laughs> it, it is from 2017 to 2021. <laughs> you're a CrossFit Games competitor, mm -hmm. qualifying for the games. Um, 21, you didn't get to participate, but from 17 to 20, you ne you never finished lower than 22nd. So essentially, if Bethany makes it to the games, she's top 20. Yeah. Right. Now, it, but you're saying that that other than maybe the carry year, you didn't find a lot of joy in it because you're struggling with the back, you're struggling with some different things. Now, the Bethany of this year, going through the season, knowing that you're at a limited capacity at this point, doesn't mean mm -hmm. you will be forever, but you are at this point. Mm -hmm. Are you having more joy now than mm -hmm. you were before? 1000%. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's hard to say that because like, I'm still competitive and I am an athlete and I really want to do well. And like my ultimate goal is still to be on the podium. Like I still want that. Um, and so I don't want people to think that I'm saying all this as like, like a cop out. And I don't think people are, but I think that's the lies that the enemy tells me. It's like, you're just saying all this stuff because you want to cop out, but no. Um, I think at this point in my life, um, I just have a lot of peace because I feel like I'm on the right path. And whether that works out for me this year and the puzzle pieces fall into place or it doesn't, like the things that I'm doing right now aren't changing the next day, you know, um, or the next year. So they might transform a little bit and be refined, but I know the pathway that I'm on right now is the right one for me um because of the peace and the joy and the fulfillment that i feel um through the whole process and things still not being a hundred percent um and so yeah that's one thing that I actually reflected on the other day was um being where i was at last year and being very burnt out and just thinking that my career was over and um i was gonna quit to like coming back from all of that and not only coming back, but finding joy again in the gym, even though my back still isn't a hundred percent. That's, I think that's redemption in itself. Um, and I'm like super proud that I feel like that. So everything else is just icing on the cake right now. So I hope I can phrase this question, right? You made a post a few months ago talking about your experience to the open and how mm -hmm. you knew it wasn't, you weren't in like the ideal physical shape to do what you needed to do. And you knew that you couldn't push through certain things at times, but you were still going to do it and kind of, kind of 
um, get through it. A lot of people interpreted that as Bethany's not trying to be um, competitive anymore. <laughs> that Bethany is um, just taking a step back and she's realized her body can't take it anymore. I read it as you're just, you're just listening to your body for the first time. If anybody has watched you over your career, you go to a dark place better than most. And Thank sometimes you. that was to your detriment. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think so. <laughs> so yeah. that's my interpretation, but I want to hear what your interpretation of that statement was. Yeah, no, um, I am far from being done. I think that I haven't really even tapped into my full potential as an athlete. Um, but um, I think at the same time, I'm, I'm just having a lot more peace about things too. So like um, this year is a different year for me. Like this year is just, uh, I think it's, a, it's about learning um, a type of mindset and skill set that I've never actually applied um, to my career. And so it's, it's, for me, it's taking a risk, it's taking a huge risk um, on my career. But I think um, nothing great happens without taking risks and you have to, quote unquote, if you want to call it a failure, uh, you fail sometimes. And I'm just at a point in my career where I'm willing to take some chances. I am willing to take some chances, not only because I want to do it, but also I don't think my body is going to allow me to do it any other way. Um, I think my back went on strike last year and we're getting out of that strike, but there's still a lot of things that I can't do. And so for me, it's all about the mental and the mindset, which I think that I have a, a sh very strong mindset when it comes to going into those dark places, right? Um, but I think for me this year, God's like, but what if I can do a lot with a little? And I'm like, hmm, scary. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's very scary for me because I'm like, I want to do a lot with a lot. I'm a doer. Like, I just want to do so much and go over and beyond. And that's always just been my personality. Um, but so I think this year for me, um, honestly, I'm going to, I'm just going to call a spade as a spade. I think that if the workouts play to my advantage this year, which I think they can, I can get on the podium. Cause I think that I can peak at the right time, which is in August. Um, but for that to happen, there's going to be more struggle that needs to happen. And uh, semifinals is going to be a, it's going to be a fight, just like quarterfinals for me. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be a tooth and nail scratching, crawling if I have to. Um, but I think if my body continues to work the way that it's working right now, which is continuing to progress slowly, uh, I think I can peak in August. Um, and with this newfound mindset that I have and the skills that I'm doing outside of the gym, which is a lot more resting and a lot more quiet time and a lot more just being by myself and inner work uh, and me peaking at the same time, that causes for something great to happen. Um, so I don't know. That's just kind of where my mindset is, is with all that stuff. If, is that going to happen? I have no idea. I have no idea, but, um, can it happen? Is it a possibility? I think so. A hundred percent. So. So in, in past conversations, we've talked about, you felt you overtrained, you, you had a hard time shutting off the switch. Yeah. So in, in watching your career. <laughs> over the years, you probably, other than the carry year, were not peaking at the right time. Correct. I don't even the think carry I year. correctly at, on that year either. That year <laughs> is the big unknown, right? That's the scary yeah. unknown because what you did at West Coast that year, because lest the audience forget, you killed, killed West Coast <laughs> Classic. You won that event. You beat Carrie. You beat your training partner because she made you stronger in areas that you were weak coming in. Yes, she did. 
Yes, she did. And you blew it out. And then, so that and Wadapalooza, where you almost won, those were the last time we saw you on the floor. Yeah. So yeah. don't forget how talented this woman is. <laughs> like, you bring a lot to the table. Thank you. Appreciate that. So I, I am always going to be rooting for you. Um, yeah. And I hope that that is what happens. And yeah. there was another question um, I wanted to throw up here. Judy says, do you have a therapist or a mentor that has been helping you with this mindset? Or has it been all mm. self-discovery? Um, I've, I've always worked with some type of therapist throughout kind of like my, from teenage years till now. Um, but I think it's, it's, a, it's a mixture of both because like, it's just like working out, right? You can't expect to work out once or eat healthy once a week and expect big changes or transformations to truly take place. Um, so if you like work with someone like a therapist, then you have to do work on those other days. You can't just show up once a week or once a month, whenever you schedule that and expect transformation to happen. And so, um, that's kind of like my thought process back then before I started kind of realizing self-discovery in 2019, um, was just that I was just like kind of showing up and expecting things to change. Um, but I started taking more, when I started taking more ownership and, and working, when I was working with people, um, that's when I started really seeing changes. It's the stuff that you do by yourself, um, alone. I think it's good. Like you need someone to guide you of like what to do. Right. Um, but then I think you also have to use intuition too, because I think our bodies are very smart. Um, and intuition for me is the Holy spirit. And I think the Holy spirit kind of guides me of what to, what to do, what to listen to podcast sermons, uh, um, for me, it's a lot of writing. I get a lot from just journaling and writing and writing out my thoughts. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's more just like taking ownership of things. Um, but I am working with someone specifically right now for like a 14 week intens intensive. And it's about um, just working on like inner child shadows, um, working on like feminine energy because I actually realized that I'm not very feminine. <laughs> so there's just like certain things I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't, I don't do that. So, um, and so, but you have to be like, I, I didn't work with someone for quite some time. And I just felt intuitively that it was time to work with somebody and have a mentor of some sort. So I was like, I need to find somebody. And then this person kind of came into my pathway. Um, and I was just like, there's not really a good time to do something like this. So let's just do it, you know, and it's been really helpful. And she's been helping with like meditation work too, because I've never really known how to meditate. And uh, that's been pretty fun and cool to experience. So yeah, but it's, it's work every day. It's, it's ownership and taking ownership and discipline and doing that stuff for yourself every single day, whatever that looks like. So I want to clean up a few comments. Uh, Corey Leonard says, peaking in, in August sounds like a great idea. I'd love to see Brittany Shadburn, Shadburn on the podium. Brittany Shadburn. <laughs> um, uh, Kat, my co-host, uh, who couldn't make it today. Karaoke in Madison, it's happening. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe we can get Randy up there. <laughs> um, and then uh, Trish says that uh, shadow work is so important. It is. It is. It's interesting. And I think that's about everything there. So the last thing I want to touch on, because uh, yeah. yeah, we're getting close to the top of the hour, and that is um, sponsors. So mm, in this yeah. time off, there has been a shift in some of your sponsors. And we don't, we don't need to name names or yeah. anything like that. But did you find out who was truly behind you when you had to take this year off? Um, or was yeah. it just yeah. the normal cycle of a shift? I think it was both. Like, um, I, I have to give a shout out to Born Primitive because there's no way that I would be able to continue to be an athlete when I wasn't going to the CrossFit Games without them and like having a clothing line with them and stuff and a clothing collection. So I was, and I was with them for four years. And so i um, grateful for that experience. But that was just kind of like, 
contract was done, transformations kind of happening in their company. And it was just time for me or us to kind of split ways. Um, but really grateful for that experience. So now I'm currently with First Form um, with not only supplements, but clothing too. Um, so that's been a cool, um, I don't think there's any other athletes that are with clothing with First Form. So uh, it's kind of a cool experience and never even heard of it until you just mentioned yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. They have clothing. They don't have like a, they're, they're building it right now. So there, there is stuff on their website if you look, um, but they're continuing to build it right now. I think they just started launching it like last year. They've always had like t-shirts and stuff, but um, their clothing is awesome. I love it. And it's just very like plain, which I like and Randy likes too. So it's not like crazy patterns or anything. So which I realized, side note, side tangent, with wedding dress shopping, I thought that I wanted, wanted a certain dress, like a bunch of lace and stuff, and realized that's not great for me because I'm already busy. I'm busy. I am busy. I am busy. I have lots of muscles. Uh, so simple is better for me. So first form is actually perfect for me. They're very simple. Um, so yeah, I'm with them. But yeah, I think a lot of there's like a mixture of both where it's like, oh, I mean, you know, I'm really, really grateful for the experience of being able to continue to be an athlete when I didn't get to be an athlete on the floor um, through my sponsorships. But yeah, it's just like a shift, a shift, um, but a good one. Yeah, I'm kind of down to a couple of them now right now and um, it's peaceful. <laughs> it's peaceful. Well, like Toast Baster has been with you forever. Yeah, like yeah, they've actually... After. They've actually never seen me. I've been with them and I've never been competed on the CrossFit floor, CrossFit Games floor, I think. I think. Yeah, because I think in like 2020, obviously, we were, you know, in COVID times. But yeah, so they've been with me and they haven't even seen me on the CrossFit Games floor. So really great. And, and you actually have a, a footwear sponsor now that you've never had before. I get my toe spacers real quick. There we go. Um, oh. Even yeah. wear them during podcasts. Oh, yeah. Dude, I always got to wear these. These are great. I love my toe spacers. Um, footwear. Yes. No. No. Um, no? No more. No more. No, no more. more. No it's more. on your Instagram. I you know. Take it off. I know. It just happened. <laughs> it just happened like two days ago. Um, okay. So, but Crocs. Yeah. Crocs. Always, always sporting the Crocs. Always, always Crocs, always Crocs. Um, yeah, they. I'm still Quick waiting for my there. sponsorship. I'm, I'm waiting for my sponsorship still. I'm waiting for my chance at the CrossFit Games for an event that I can wear the Crocs. That's what I want. I'm waiting for it. It's happening. It's coming. Do you, do you still wear them in training? You know, um, not as much only because the doctor I'm working with right now, he has me in like these orthopedic shoes for my back. And so it's kind of sad. I've had to like let them take a little rest, a little sleep, but I, I, I put my feet in every once in a while. I'm like, Oh, feels great. I love my Crocs. Um, but I have to wear my orthopedics as much as possible right now for my back, which is kind of sad, but so it's good. As a guy who suffers from back chronic back pain as well, mm -hmm surgically repaired a few times the yeah. whole bit like i'm gonna ask you this question toe spacers right yes so i learned that if i don't wear socks when i'm working out so my toes can like spread Red. yeah i get way less back pain mm, yeah everything's connected everything's connected that's for sure goes up the chain have you ever noticed anything like with the toe spacers that that has helped your back or you um, don't get that relief? For me, initially I started wearing them for my knee because my knee was hurting like my meniscus area. I thought I like tore it uh, in like 2020 or 2019. And I was like, there's something wrong with my knee. And one of the doctors was like, you need to wear toe spacers. And I was like, no, this is weird. <laughs> and then eventually I wore them and I was like, oh. I don't have any knee pain every time I wear them. So uh, yeah, it helped a lot with my knee, but I think it was because I was, which is actually correlated to my back. Cause I was, um, I had sciatica. I don't know if you dealt with that, like the nerve pain down your leg. Oh yeah. And um, because of that, I started work, walking more on the outside of my foot. And so because I was walking on the outside of my foot, my calf was getting really tight. 
and then causing me pain. Um, so the toe spacers kind of like help me get back to like a normal foot setting where I'm pressing evenly throughout my foot so it doesn't tighten up my calf. So um, kind of related, I guess, to your back-ish. But yeah, more for knee. Yeah. Knee with knee. Yeah, mine is L5 S1. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yep. and, and disc on the sciatic nerve all the way yeah. to my toes hurts like hell. Um, but yeah. thankfully for the last year and a half, I've been good. Oh, that's good. That's good. I'm, I'm happy for you because I know how yeah. much it's not fun, but it's so painful. So painful. Oh, I don't wish that on my worst enemy. Like it's just very yeah. painful. Ugh. Yeah. Sleep in a recliner for 18 months because you can't even lay flat. Um, yeah. So Jeffrey Birchfield asks, what coffee are you drinking these days? And do you know Jeffrey? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, this is the coffee I will show you. Oh, it's a local Austin coffee, actually. It's my favorite one. It's called Kube. Where's my camera at? Very cool. That's do you still favorite. use a lot of creamer? Always. A little coffee, mostly creamer. <laughs> and Jeffrey earlier in the show, like way back said he misses the crazy Saturday workouts. Oh, those were the greatest. Oh, good times. I don't think Randy misses those, but I do. <laughs> Everybody that I know that knows you and worked out with you said those Saturdays were legendary. <laughs> I was just, you don't want me to program or coach. I just, I don't think <laughs> it was not good. It was just like death by this silly stuff. Good times. Those good times. Um, so the last question I have for you is Randy's yeah. a strength and conditioning coach. You met yeah. him at a strength and conditioning conference. You have been yeah. a coach in the past. Do you see your future being a coach again, or have you moved past that into other areas now? Um, I think for me right now, if it's, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, I think I would love to like mentor, um, younger, um, women athletes, um, that kind of struggle with the same things as I do. Um, and I hope, I hope I get that experience, but as far as like actual programming, I'm not so sure I would be the greatest at that. Um, but who knows? I don't know what the future holds with that, but I would love to mentor. Um, I think for me, I foresee my future having to do something with speaking and writing. I've been writing a lot the last three years. And uh, for me right now, it's just kind of writing out my story and it's a healing process for myself. Um, but I would love to share that eventually if it's for me. So um, I see my future with that kind of stuff, which will be its own adventure in itself. Yeah, I could see you, though, as like a mentor, like you said, to young athletes, because you've been through it all. Like this this yeah. whole discovery that you've gone through yeah. has got to result in something that something. you can pay forward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Don't die. It's good. <laughs> yeah. See, I try to get serious and it like just. Yeah. Uh, They're like, nope, no getting serious here. No, but I can see you paying that forward after yeah. everything that you've been through and discovered during this journey. Yeah. And that's kind of what and maybe I that see. is a book. Maybe that is yeah. speaking. Yeah. Or a mixture of both. Um, and yeah, just kind of like to touch back on like the, the season and stuff and like my career. And I think that's where maybe sometimes I can have a lot of peace with whatever the outcome is, whether I actually get that worldly goal of going on the podium or not. I can have a lot of peace because I know that God's going to use my story for something, you know, whether it is like having that worldly goal of getting on the podium and then being able to share my story or not have that podium and still share my story. Like it's still good. Like the things that I'm doing and learning this year, um, it's not all for nothing. And that's what I'm continuing to tell myself. And like the things that I'm learning this year, uh, like it goes beyond anything. It goes beyond any money that I can make, uh, any first place that I can get, though I want that stuff and it's awesome and it's okay to have want that stuff and or to get that stuff. 
um, this is where the true fulfillment is coming from and the true joy is uh, applying the stuff and trying to listen to God as much as possible and be obedient. And um, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's really hard, but it's fulfilling. It's really hard, but it's fulfilling. So um, yeah, that's why I think I can just have a lot of peace about everything that's happening this year and whatever the outcome is, whether it's I'm done after semifinals this year or go to the CrossFit games and podium, you know, or somewhere in between that, like, there is there is peace to be found when you find and define your own version of success so that has been my journey this year and it's been great and now i have a follow-up to that you found this piece you found joy in everything again can we expect you to compete again next year yeah absolutely i think if my it's just going to be a tell of my back, right? Like whether my back wants to continue to do this or not. But I think the things that I'm discovering this year is showing me that it's not over yet. Like I'm not even close to being done. Um, and it's just continuing to apply, um, I guess the rules that I'm learning about my body and my back and just respecting it and listening to it a little bit more. And I think that, I think for the first time that I can have supernatural healing over my back. Um, I truly believe that for the first time. And so I think with that, um, that makes my career even longer and have a lot of longevity in it. Um, And so I'm excited for the next, you know, couple of years. Obviously, like, there's going to be a time where me and Randy want to have kids. (laughs) So I'll probably stop then. But um, I definitely want to come back after that, too, whenever I decide to actually have kids. I think I'm always going to be a competitor and want to compete. And as long as my body holds up and my mind's there, then um, I foresee myself being very old and competing. Well, that is super exciting. Yes. Well, Bethany, I want to thank you so much. I will get to see you in Pasadena. Yay. Nice. Awesome. And uh, I will be rooting for you quietly in the media pit um, so that I don't show favoritism. But everybody on this show knows I've been a big fan for a long time. Uh, yeah, you've been a long time friend and supporter of this show, and we appreciate you so much. Yeah, um, thank you. And everybody in the chat, thank you so much for all the, the questions and comments. You guys are awesome. And we will see everybody next time on the Clydesdale Media Podcast. 